you know, a lot big recognition, the Avery name, the recognition in the area. I'm really excited for this, and you're the people that are doing a lot with little from the town for support. You're putting a ton of time in on your own effort, on your own, be, you know, of your own time in. So we appreciate it. So that's it. Other comments? I'll say that I, I'm uh, I'm happy that we waited a couple of weeks to. Uh, vote on it. It was nice that the Historic Properties Commission and the Smith-Harris Commission had a chance to make sure that they were uh, in agreement and on the same page. I thought that was important. So I'm glad we took a little extra time uh, to do it that way. Well, Mr. Dickerson, you mentioned earlier about the boundaries. Are those now recorded in Town Hall? Yes, they are. And we voted on them several years, uh, I think a couple of years ago now, Gary. We started in 2008. Well, I don't know, mm -hmm. but you and I, 16, I think yeah. yeah, we banked it yeah, a couple about years two ago. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Right. They are recorded, ma'am. Other questions, comments? I think, uh, I, I, first of all, the passion that you're putting into this, the amount of time and energy um, that the whole group did, and, and Joni, you, you just you're, you're lifting us to another level, and it's much appreciated, and I hear about that from the people sitting with you. Um, I think this will invigorate your museum, but I think this will invigorate your commission, that, that you'll feel this new passion, this new opportunity for growth and, 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 and what you can become, and I think that's just awesome. And I, uh, we don't want to forget the past, and we don't want to forget our ideals of when we bought the house and what it was and what it has been, but we also need to move forward. And I, uh, I applaud you folks for uh, for giving part of yourselves to this to this uh, to this town museum, this cherished town museum. Very very excited to vote f in favor of this tonight. So, if there's no other comments, I'll call for that vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? There's a lot of work to get to this point, and I congratulate you on that hard work. And everything works out for a reason, Joni. And we got here tonight, okay? So let's move forward. Thank you all. Thank you. Continued success. Thank you. Great, great news. Thanks for coming out tonight. There's a um, review and possible action of proposed ordinances, uh, which is the parking ordinance and another one, an ordinance to repeal an ordinance. <laughs> Um, I love those, yeah, we but we'll do the parking yeah. ordinance because yeah, I think they're related. Yeah, we can take action to the public yeah, hearing. Yes, so we're going to have a public hearing. <laughs> the action would be to schedule a public hearing. Oh yeah. Should should we? Uh, okay. Decide. There's there might be some confusion with what we sent out because you see an option one, and you see an option two. And I think that's on page. Well, mm -hmm. it's about a couple pages in. Option one basically takes the state statute and writes it out into our into our ordinance. And option two takes the same state statute and just refers it, refers to it, I should say. And it basically has everything to do with if someone wants to challenge a parking ticket or a um, um, one of these, yeah, parking ordinance uh, violations, that there's a procedure, a public, uh, there's a hearing officer and all that. And it's my suggestion that we use option two and we reference the, the hearing, uh, the, the, the general statute, uh, it will save us money on the printing costs, but also it, I don't think it's necessary if it can be found somewhere else. And our, of course, our, now that we have a police commission and we have a police chief who uh, will be around for a while and you know, his replacement will be around for a while, that these people would be tuned up to how these things work anyway. Um, so. That's my suggestion. We uh, this my only other thought was the twenty five dollars for a parking penalty seems low. Seems low when when it only, when it costs forty to, to to get into the parking lot at McCook's. It's a lot cheaper to get yeah. caught parking on the street mm -hmm. um, and, and walk in. So, um, uh, Mark, I got a couple of comments. Yes, um, that was one of them. Yep. Um, Mine too. And I went through um, some other towns, and they actually break it out. Um, some are more than others. But let me just start um, with number one upon the highway. Um, there's nothing in there about handicap. Handicap would be, 
if you're parking in a handicapped spot, there's a state statute that covers that. There, what is it worth putting here? Some some towns had it in there, spelled out specifically. I, the handicap is a much higher fine at the state level when I would keep it there. Now only because of the seriousness of that type of a, an offense. But who sets the fine? The state, state or the town? If it's STC, it'll be state. Yeah. Yeah. Traffic traffic. State traffic. So what traffic. fine is that's not going to be that? That's so that's not going to. This won't apply to handicap parking. Okay. Okay. Um, do we need any language in there, or is is it covered in other ordinance during, for parking bans, like during snow removal? That's a good question. I like that. Parking bans or we have street festivals. I meant to look up the ordinance. I meant to, I didn't get a chance to look it up. But that's already covered. But we post no parking for you know. Uh, right, right. Come under J in your list. Because I think you put up when there's a parking ban. Mm -hmm. Well, in that's why we're having a festival. But there's also a parking ban that I would declare before a an emer a snow emergency that becomes more of a verbal and it's a town website thing. We don't put signs up. I think we should have that in or there. Or in J, just put parentheses, including. Well, the other option is to tow vehicles to be able to safely clean and then have the violator be responsible for the towing by fining them the $25. Towing will be much more expensive than the $25 right, I, ticket. There were some towns that had that. Unless system. you want to do both. <laughs> and sometimes we might do both. Right. We give the police an option to do both. So. I don't know if we need to spell it out or not, but I wouldn't mind it spelling it out. My only, does, does this, um, the only other thing I saw in some other towns were fire lanes, including, and there was fire lanes including temporary parking or waiting in a fire lane. We have within a fire hydrant, but I know we have fire lanes and schools and stuff like that. I, know, I, I think this was meant more or less to you know, I don't want to get too cumbersome. I mean, uh, the state statute covers parking or, or standing in a fire lane, or standing I mean the car's not moving and stuff like that. Same thing as parking, uh, you know, in a handicapped spot and so forth like that too. Because one of the frustrating things is if you go into a stop and shop parking lot and park on an angle and take up three spots, there's not a thing the police can do to you. Absolutely nothing. Because, you know, it, you, you can't regulate parking for the most part in a private lot as far no, as except, yeah. except for that the private lot, yeah. but, or, but um, you know I, I think and if someone's parking in a fire lot I'd much rather see them get a state traffic violation sign which is a lot more expensive than something like you know 35 or 40 dollars well, aren't fire lanes usually marked with a sign yeah they are marked or there's just a yellow curve a yellow curve is usually oh. or and then there's something so on, on the road so isn't that covered under J I, yeah it would be not sure right. And, and to me, you mentioned, you know, standing by in a fire lane, asking them to move and having them move, I think, mm -hmm. is No, I mean, you okay. always do that. Leaving your vehicle in there and then yeah. leaving it. Yeah, the language I saw, like, in East Harford was if temporary parking or waiting for someone, running into a store or something like that, that type of thing. Yeah, but that's usually what people do. Um, Stop and shop comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we don't have to worry about handicap. Um, but, but, but Mr. Salerno, I love your idea about, about the, the parking ban. I like ban. the parking ban. That's a good, uh, very good. Snow emergency or otherwise, some parking ban. Maybe you can come up with some language, uh, Mr. O'Connell, before we publish this. You know, I'll um, do some research and see if there's other statutes which might apply. It sounds like Mr. Salerno can give well, you some what ideas. What concerns me is whether a driver has notice uh, of, of the uh, of ban. Right. Yeah, that's uh, the problem. Of course, that's why we have appeals to it. Right. Mm. Right. Right. I'm at that. And, and, and to Mr. Daigle's point, we're probably just going to tow the vehicle and, and make them pay for the tow. Uh, but there might be chronic and there might be a reason that we would want to do this. So, so I'll add on the, the follow up on that and penalties. Um, we have an option there, as you can see. We have maybe oh, we definitely need that. I'm definitely in favor of that. 25 seems low, but I would like to also add um, including the exp towing expenses. We have to tow a vehicle. 
we should be able to go after them with a ticket and the towing expenses. A couple towns had that, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Do they automatically get a tow, or do we? I don't know. Do Unless it's po it has to be posted that, you know, yeah. towing enforced if you if it's for the violation of the one or two hour parking. If you didn't, yeah. have, you'd have to spec. Oops, you'd have to pe specify that. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. There's a whole section of the general statutes regarding towing. It's a very uh, controversial and complex area. Hmm. Maybe we should look into that. Yeah. Just to cover ourselves. I don't know if we've ever done it, but it, yeah. well, I mean, you can here again. If, 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 if yeah. a car is parked towards in the travel portion of a lane, you, you tow it. You, I mean, th that makes it very, really easy to do. If you're in the travel portion of any highway, you can tow a vehicle. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, if it's not posted towing in force, normally it's just a, an STC or a town violation in this case. And in this case, I have a hunch, you know, if you ticket someone, you know, how long you're going to wait before you tow them. I mean, you've put a ticket on the car for $40 or something or $50, however much we make it, you know, you're not going to give them 45 minutes, especially if everybody's wedged in, you're going to have to have tow trucks just riding up and down the road. Um, I mean, some, like New Haven has uh, several roads where from 4 to 6 p.m. there's no parking. And if you're there at 4 o'clock, you get ticketed and towed, but it says towing enforced mm. f during that period. Um, I would... We could. Always, I'd like to see. We could amend that because somebody could park down there for whatever reason, get a ticket, and we don't really know why the person could have gotten sick. We don't know. And then they come back, and in addition to being sick, they find their car towed, and now they have to pay the expense, and then they can appeal it at some point in time. So, before we get into towing things that weren't a hazard, if they're a hazard, they get towed instantly anyway. Well, that's all I'm. Co I'm not talking about if, if a vehicle for more than two hours now if, a, if a vehicle is hazardously parked it can be towed instantly yeah. right that's the only that's i wouldn't mind language in there for that okay um because right bridgefield, bridgefield. bridgefield. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. right They made a suggestion to us to pass an ordinance, and uh, you know, it's of course we're doing our due diligence to make sure that it fits uh, appropriately. And uh, I, I think it, that's some good ideas. We, I, I'm asking the chief right now, who, who um, uh, typically we have the citizens pay for toes now. I don't know, you know, how they, what statute they use to allow that. If we're towing a car for an investigative purpose, that's different. No, yes. That's on them. But um, but if we're towing off a of main street because some car is parked down there and been parked down there, and we're trying to clear the street for celebrating Slime Day, we tow. We Usually tow. We properly notice. So it's not released from the lot until it's paid for. Yeah, and, and we have the citizen pay for right. that because it's been properly yeah. signed. Th there are the statute does give, and you know. If you go and you pay the tow fee, and if you think it was inappropriate, then you, there's a complaint you can file. Right. There, there's a process to try and get that back. But you, usually for a vehicle to be towed, if it's not a hazard, just an abandoned motor vehicle where it's just sitting in a two-hour parking spot, you usually wait 24 hours before you would tow it. Okay. Two more things. Um, down at the bottom, uh, second line on page two, it says Ridgefield parking officer. That should be fine. <laughs> no, um, we're going to make him come all the way across state. No, yeah, problem. exactly. At, on his dime, um, I, I would throw out. I wouldn't mind doubling it to fifty dollars. I would agree. I'm, I'm good with fifty dollars. I think too. we got to cover our administrative costs. Um, it could end up costing us more money if we just charge twenty-five. Well, Time again, we admin, the paperwork. Again, you can get out of paying for beach parking by, yeah. by only getting a twenty-five dollar fine on the street. Right. The whole really the. The motivator for putting this in is beach parking and, um, you know, uh, concerns we have about downtown. It's not that much traffic. of a difference because the walk-in you have to pay 10 So you get a ticket for 25 10 That's to walk true. in. It's a $5 difference, and you've yep. got to carry all your beach stuff yep. down the road. So my opinion on the $25, it is maybe low compared to other places, but what is it now? $5? Five $5. Dollars? Five dollars. That's right. Second. Yeah, but so we, we haven't been issuing town tickets for okay. a long time yeah. and, and how much of a parking problem do we have is it are we burdensome? according to the merchants they, oh. they're having trouble how yeah. about people are parking and walk, don't forget citizens walk in for free yeah. 
they don't pay the ten dollars. So yeah. they're parking for free. They're walking in for free. They don't get a beach pass. And um, I, I just think you that's I, I, that's yeah. an issue. Going from five to fifty is a pretty big increase. How about an option like the state has with like cell phone? The first offense, you can make twenty five dollars, and the PD would have a record of it if they issued <coughs> a previous <coughs> citation to a license plate. Second offense could be fifty dollars, something like that. To where I'm not going to say I'm totally against fifty. It's just an opinion that. No, I get it. With five to fifty, it's a big jump. But you bring five up. We have an issue. We haven't even printed a parking ticket at a print shop. <laughs> they no. can't do it. If they, if the cops, um, if the police officers today or even before we went independent wanted to issue a parking ticket, let's say someone parked across the crosswalk, and they do issue those, what would they do? They'd issue a state traffic violation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right now, the only thing, the option they have for illegal parking on a state road is the, or, or even a town road, is a, is a improper parking, 1496A. Yeah, you would uh, know. I would know. Police state officer. It's a state, it, it Kevin, used, what would that cost? $92. Okay, so, so, it's, so. so it's no, we're not going for five. And I just, that was my point. We're not going from five to 50. We're going from 92 down to 50. That's our money, first of all. <laughs> it's not going to the state. Um, and second of all, we, we would control that. Well, um, I'm in favor of the I mean, it's got to be over the 40. Okay. Otherwise, it's not yep. in the center. One other. Are you done, Mark? No. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, one other thing, too. It says the optional, if the designated fine is not paid within 14 days. Used to be on a ticket, you'd always move it to two weeks from the nearest Friday. So if you was on a Thursday and the Friday was the 10th, you'd put down the answer date of the 24th. You'd always give people 14 days. A lot of people never did it, so this, what I would do is I, I'd extend it to, to 30 days because 14 days goes by in a hurry, and I'd hate to see so you know then if it doubles. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would I would I mind if yeah. not paid, then yeah. the fine shall double. You know. So how many days? Basically 30, so 30, 30, 30, 30 uh, calendar days. Do we take out the triple? Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. If we're gonna I go mean, to 50, we take out the. Yeah. yeah, it's already at 100 at that point. Because yeah. Dan, you know, if people plead not guilty to those. They, they never, you know, the state will add a service charge, but they don't never never triple it. Thirty count. Thirty. No, no tripling at all. Triple. Yeah, thirty days doubles, and then you know you just you keep sending them. Okay. Letters. <laughs> That's all I have. So it's going to be thirty. So fourteen. Fourteen is going to go to thirty. Okay. And you want to move it to 50? I, I don't know. I just, if you're going to have the statute, I mean, the ordinance, and uh, some teeth. it has to give it a little bit of teeth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if it's 40 bucks to park at the beach, you're right. Everybody's going to be parking the cars all over the place for 25 bucks. Yeah, as they have been. Yeah. So. Okay. Leave it at 50. Right then. Any other comments? Um, well, let's talk about our two opportunities here. Again, I, I'd recommend going to option two, which is <coughs> the statutory reference only. Um, option one actually spells out what actually option two is, which is all these uh, provisions on I, I'd go with getting out of your ticket. I'd go with <laughs> option two because you know, if, it's, if it was years ago where you'd have to run to a library to grab a state statute right. now you just google it online and boom it pops right up and then you get the absolute most up-to-date right. one too right so you're always staying current with whatever the yeah that well that's the issue too we don't have to change an ordinance if right. the state you're incorporating by reference right and as, as it says is which from time to time will change right. yeah. good um so where I, where, sh where should we go with this folks should we uh, i did have a, another yeah. question sir in the state statute, it talks about a hearing officer when there's an appeal. Who would the hearing officer be? Someone appointed by the uh, 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 first select. Uh, I think the last time I looked at it, that person cannot be another official of the town. Mm -hmm. It has to be an independent person appointed by the first select. Under option one, that's section B. So is that like what we did with the um, light ordinance? Yeah. And okay. We also have one for the uh, 
inland wetlands finding ordinance. There's a provision for a hearing officer in that also. Yes. And it says one or more. I think it'd be good because it could be a hearing officer could have a conflict. Yeah, I think there'll be more of these appeals than any than Blight and the other one. Mm -hmm. Especially at fifty dollars. Show point two parking yeah. violation yeah. hearing officers. Oh yeah, you nothing to lose except the late payment. One or more, I think, gives me the option to pay maybe three because you never know. You know, it's a small town, especially if you're going to point. My guess is you're going to appoint someone with a legal background. Uh, probably, you know, more than likely. We'll just appoint one person. I don't know if we'll get appeals or not on this. Um, and again, it, it, the statute says I can appoint one or more. So I could appoint three. If, it, if one turns into be a problem, I'll appoint two more and they'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a, a commission, a, a group that will decide. A panel. A panel. Is this a volunteer <coughs> position? Yes. Volunteer position, <coughs> right? New, New, Lon Lon yeah, New London, I believe, has a paid, a paid attorney. That, uh, yeah. Well, what you wouldn't hear them on a roll. You'd wait until you had a no, number of them. <laughs> Because I know with the state now, if you plead not guilty to a ticket, you're probably going to wait three to four months before you get your hearing date. This says a hearing should be held not less than 15 days or more than 30 days from the date of the mailing of the notice. That's going to be hard. It's going to have to change it. That's the state statute, That's right? That's the state, state statute. statute. No, you can't change that. You can't change it. That's why perhaps if you had two hearing officers, you could speed the process up if one was not available. If one is available. Okay. And, and if you don't meet that requirement, would that be grounds of dismissal for the fine? Well, if he appeals properly, he makes a decision on the appeal, and it's only a decision to render, uh, the hearing officer will make the decision on the appeal. And if it's not rendered within the 30 days? Uh, that's an that's a, uh, issue that uh, would have to be researched. Uh, okay. That's, you know, that's a, oh, and the, the ticketing official needs to be present as well at the hearing. Yeah, they get subpoenaed. Right. Who issues the subpoenas for this town? Um, any attorney can issue a subpoena. But it's only the hearing would be held at the town hall, so the ticketing official would only have require a lot of coordination no. if there are appeals no I mean you know well in advance because uh, I think what does it say you have to schedule the hearing or to have the hearing within shall be days. held not less yeah. than 15 days or more than 30 days from the date of the mailing of the notice and that's the notice from the ap appealer I believe yeah so if you got 30 days it's just you know, get it done we have people at the, at the police station who will be accepting these checks, and um, and if something gets appealed, then it will trigger. And this is all police commission, um, you know, um, procedures and policy. They'll they'll have a procedure that will have to kick in mm -hmm. to, to call the hearing officer to schedule and to make it happen. And, the hearing and you're right, Mrs. Hardy. We should have a backup, a deputy, if you will, on the hearing or whatever. Right. So we'll have a backup. Yep. We'll have a backup. And I would assume we'd have to have the hearing officers identified prior to having the ordinance go into effect. It has, no. has to be appointed by the right. first selectman. Not before the ordinance goes into effect. Well, before we start issuing tickets, yes. Right. Before the hearing is held. Yes. Yeah. Um, but this has to, we've got to get the ordinance oh, passed yeah, first. Take, you know. And then. Um, I would say contemporaneously with passing yeah. the ordinance, yeah. you then appoint, and you have in mind who you're. They're only officers appointed for one year period of time well, would, um, yeah. to expire on Jan uh, December 31st and then so. re up to someone else. And you're from that individual, uh, uh, I suppose, the hearing officer, not only the traffic tickets, but for the inland wetlands and for the other, for the blank. Sure. Sure. So they can hear a multitude of uh, types That's of. That's a good idea. Sure. Yeah. Right. That makes good sense. Great. So what's our pleasure? Do we want to clean this up first and have Mr. O'Connell do a little bit more research and then get a final draft?
before we go to uh, ordinance, so. uh, public so. hearing? I think, so. I think we should. Go. I think so, because by the time this is all done, we're pretty much going to be past the summer anyway, so yeah. no, no rush into it. Yeah. I just have one question of curiosity. It may not apply to this. H how do we deal with abandoned vehicles? If somebody abandons a vehicle, that's, that's, uh, there's a state is, law. Is that that a it takes, it ha we would have absolutely, that, that's really written into state statute. Mm -hmm. What it is, uh, a tow company tows the car, mm -hmm. and then it sits there and uh, do you get a warning on it? You put a warning on. No, it? you don't put a warning on it. You just you tow it, and you c you can mail a, a a ticket to the person, the registered owner, if if you can find it, because sometimes you don't even have a record of, of ownership of it. But it's towed to a garage, and the garage keeps it. If somebody comes to claim it, then uh, contact the police. Please put a hold on it. Don't release this until you know, you know if the person comes. So you can hold on it. And eventually, if no one ever claims it, then there's what's called an H-109 form where you turn the title over to the, the garage that towed it. So that can be on, like, school property. It doesn't have to be on state property. We can no, any place. Any place you have an abandoned vehicle. If, so, if there's a car in the parking lot here for a week and it, we can't find out who owns it or anything like that, the police would have every authority to t have it. whoever, whatever record service. That's what I figured. Oh, no, it's then All right. there's laws. So that that's totally that. aside. From yeah. 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 Seems like it's separate, but yeah, it's separate, but yeah. Terrific. So, uh, Mr. O'Connell, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. And uh, we'll look into maybe the parking ban thing, especially the snow emergency stuff. I think that most of your other concerns were addressed um, by, by yeah, Mr. Snow Siri emergency. about the state stuff. And yeah. Then it was really towing, and I asked about towing expenses. Th those are really good Towing expenses. We'll look into that. I asked Chief Fink, uh, Finkelstein, and uh, he uh, indicated that citizens or the, the car owners would be responsible for that. But let's firm that up. Yeah. Maybe we put it in here so we're we're solid when we're when we're issuing these things. We'd rather not use our hearing officer. We'd rather be crystal clear in our well, ordinance. Expenses, if, if the, 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 the citizens are responsible to pay the towing expenses to the towing company, we may not want to put into our ordinance that the towing expenses are available to the town. No, 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 right. to the no. no. But that we're not responsible for any towing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So we'll have to do research. Yeah. 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 And uh, and if if the decision is to put towing language in here, we may want to specify a time, so many hours afterwards, outside of the emergency situation. Yeah. So, so that people know. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I have a feeling that this model ordinance that we looked at that was probably thought through, and there's a reason why it's not in there. But we'll right. see what the research. Is. Some towns had it in there. This, yeah. I noticed this this model was used by a bunch of towns, but there were some towns. There's a liability aspect, too. I mean, you, right. You're towing a, yeah, a, a car, car that uh, is an exotic well, car that you knock off the bumper or something. Well, I remember I remember when they used to have to get on, with all rear-wheel drive cars, it was hard. They had to get under and detach some piece yeah. of linkage. Yeah, it was There's some tricks to it. Yeah. Well, let's do this once and st let's do this right. So okay. we'll, uh, we'll go back and just clean it up a little bit and, um, and do it the right way. So thank you. Uh, uh, thank you all for your comments. This is good and healthy. We haven't had to write an ordinance at the table here for quite a while uh, to tweak it. So, okay, so we're not going to have a meeting call. That's not necessary. By the way, the... Obviously, the ordinance to repeal an ordinance has to do with this. So do it all at once. Right. So, so we'll table that, thank you, for um, for the next meeting, the uh, D2. Mark, so we're, we're requesting that the online, our ordinances are only updated to 2014. We're in the process of ordin uh, updating, updating all our ordinances, and we're changing, yeah, it's going to be all online. It's going to be good. All right. Paid a lot of money to get it done right, and uh, of course now that we're doing that, we're changing all the ordinances. Uh, but <laughs> but but um, okay, we'll move on. So meeting call will be scratched uh, as well. So we we'll need to authorize the first electman to enter into a lease agreement with the Niantic uh, Lions Club. Yeah.